हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द वी एल एस आई टेक्नोलॉजी इन दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एचिंग सो हेयर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द वेट एचिंग अबाउट विच आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन द लास्ट क्लास आई हैव ऑलरेडी गिवन यू द इंट्रोडक्शन इन द लास्ट क्लास आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू वॉट इज वेट एचिंग वॉट इज केमिकल एचिंग वॉट आर एडवांटेजेस डिसएडवांटेजेस इन द टू डेज वीडियोज ऑल्सो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन डिटेल द एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेज बट I recommend you to watch the previous video also because I discussed about the etching of the silicon dioxide, the etching of the silicon also in the last video. Today we are going to start with the etching of the silicon nitride. So again, I am using the wet etching, which is also called the chemical etching. Here I am using some chemicals to etch out the silicon nitride layer. So here. I am using the high temperature. It is a hot process where the temperature is around 150 to 200 degrees Celsius, and I am using the phosphoric acid to dissolve the silicon nitride solution. It is highly selective and towards highly selective uh, towards the silicon dioxide. So it will not remove silicon dioxide layer. It will just remove the silicon nitride layer. This is a very good advantage of the wet chemical etching. of the silicon nitride it is used for the local oxidation of silicon and also it is used for the sti nitride strip as well okay so for the isolation purposes i have already discussed about the short range isolation in the previous video if you have still not watched it you can watch it again so now coming to the silicon uh, nitride reaction with the phosphoric acid so here if i have the silicon nitride you can see here this is the silicon nitride which is si3n4 it is reacting with the phosphoric acid which is 4h3po4 and it is giving me si3po44 which is a uh, by product and it can be easily removed so here i have the ammonia gas which can also be removed but it should be handled with care okay so now coming to the wet etching of the aluminium it this process will be used in the met metallization process there also i am going to discuss this process but let's have a quick overview about the etching of the aluminium again i am using the high temperature but the temperature is not much high i am using 42 to 45 degree celsius and in the one example i can use the 80% phosphoric acid 5% acetic acid 5% nitric acid and 10% water where nitric acid i know it is nitric acid is a very good oxidizing agent and it oxidizes aluminium and phosphoric acid is used to remove it is a very strong acid it will remove the aluminium oxide so now i have the acetic acid acetic acid will be used to slow down the reaction so that the reaction will not be moving very fast and i want to have the control over this process i want to remove the particular layer in the particular depth so i want the control the control i can get with the help of the acetic acid so acetic acid slows down the oxidation of the nitric acid now coming to the wet etching of the titanium so here i am using 1 is to 1 mixture of hydrogen peroxide now hydrogen peroxide is also a very good oxidizing agent it is h2o2 and here i am using the sulfuric acid okay so h2o2 oxidizes titanium to form the tio2 as i have already told you hydrogen peroxide is a very good oxidizing agent sulfuric acid reacts with the titanium oxide and it removes it simultaneously hydrogen peroxide oxidizes silicon also because it is a very strong oxidizing agent so it will be oxidizing silicon to form silicon dioxide but there is a problem that h2so4 doesn't react with the silicon dioxide so if i want to remove both of the layer if i have silicon and silicon dioxide as well as the titanium uh, layer so if i want to remove the titanium and silicon dioxide layer both i cannot use this process okay but if i want to keep intact the silicon dioxide then this process is highly selective this is a very good advantage also so now coming to the self aligned titanium silicide formation okay so first of all we have the titanium deposition for the metallization process so here we have the titanium deposited over the polysilicon okay so here you can see we have the titanium layer okay so now when uh, we have the silicide annealing so the titanium will be forming the titanium silicide okay over here so titanium will be reacting with the polysilicon over here and it will be forming the tis2 okay tisi2 
so now here we have the titanium stripping so when i strip off titanium i have already discussed how i can strip off titanium in the previous uh, slide so here you can see i have stripped off titanium but this process was highly selective so here i have the tisi2 remained here okay so i cannot remove this layer so now what are the factors that are affecting this chemical etching so it is also the chemical etching the wet etching is chemical etching so here the first factor that is affecting our etching is temperature if i have high temperature the etching would be very fast so this etching rate is directly proportional to the temperature it is proportional to the chemical concentrations as well if i have high chemical concentration then the etching would be fast okay if i have very concentrated hydrofluoric acid very concentrated phosphorus phosphoric acid very concentrated sulfuric acid then that in that case i will be having very high etch rate okay so the wet etch rate is directly dependent upon the concentration if the concentration is large the etching rate would be very high so it depend upon the composition of film also so if my film is composed of the silicon dioxide i will be using a particular agent and this particular agent will be having the particular reactivity towards the silicon dioxide layer so it depends upon what kind of agent i have and what is the composition also now coming to the wet chemical hazards okay so what are hazards hazards are various type of uh, things that are causing some problems to us okay so we are using various acids here so acids are very hard to handle okay so we are using the hydrofluoric acid phosphoric acid hno4 which are all very harsh acids so we have to control them we have to use them very carefully they sh there should not be any leakage problem so again uh, here we have the corrosive problem also these acids are corrosive in nature and uh, now we have to handle them oxidizers is a big problem as i have already told you hydrogen peroxide nit nitric acid both of them are strong oxidizers they must also be handled with great care so now we have the special hazards hazards as well so all of them should be handled very carefully coming to the uh, wet hazards so first of all hydrofluoric acid which is a very reactive acid which is a very strong acid it does not feel when it is getting contacted with your skin but it will be attacking bone and it will be neutralized by the calcium and it will be giving the acute pain so it is very essential to handle the hydrofluoric acid with utmost care okay with that most attention you have to handle it so first of all you should not assume anything you have to treat all of the unknown clear liquids present there as they are hydrofluoric acid you have to avoid touching any one of them otherwise you will be getting acute pain okay so this technology is based upon some chemicals and some processes requires utmost attention okay now coming to the advantages first of all i have already told you this process is highly selective this is the biggest advantage of wet etching so second is it is uh, relatively inexpensive okay we are using some equipments which are inexpensive so this process as a whole is inexpensive it is a batch system so i can use a lot of uh, ic's and i can etch all of them simultaneously it will be increasing the throughput also so these are the advantages now coming to the disadvantages it is giving me isotropic profile as i have already discussed in the last lecture so isotropic profile will be giving me uniform etch rate in all of the direction which i have to avoid so here i the second disadvantage i also i have discussed it will be not be giving me feature size which is lesser than 3 micrometer and here i have high chemical usage and the problems associated with the chemicals i have already told you i have already discussed about the chemical hazards we have direct exposure to the liquids direct and indirect exposure to the fumes as well which we cannot control okay liquid for one uh, point i can control liquid but fumes it's very difficult to control so here we have the potential for explosion as well so these are the references if you want to discuss this topic in detail you can refer these books these are really amazing if you have still further any doubt you can put the doubt in the comment and i will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible i hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel and also do share it with your friends thank you so much